Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the latest edition of the Woke Bros. Of course, I'm your co-host, Big Waz, a.k.a. Wozny Lambray, and I'm joined once again, back for the first time in 2024, Nando Vila. What's up, bro? Happy New Year. It's great to be back. How was your break? Uh, fantastic. I spent all of it in New York City, um, was there oh, yeah. for three and a half weeks, enjoyed myself. But I am happy to be back in the lovely, inviting, sunny confines of Los Angeles, California. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it isn't bad. It isn't bad out here. Not For bad sure. at all. Um, we're going to jump right into it, man. Um, right before we hopped on this, um, Nando sent me a link to a news story. The U.S. and its allies have struck Houthi forces in Yemen. Of course, um, those same Houthis like tried to enact an embargo <laughs> on the seas. There's been fighting on the seas with these fools for weeks now. Uh, last week, it should be noted that um, Israel bombed the shit out of some Hezbollah leaders in Lebanon. Like they're just expanding this war effort. Uh, of course, you're not going to see Joe Biden or anybody try to make the case for it in public. They just do this shit. They don't have to consult with Congress, which we can get into this. But like I was talking to my buddy Ethan about this, how the Democrats love to be like, we're the saviors and guardians of democracy. Nothing democratic about this. Joe Biden and his regime just basically act as dictators. They do whatever the fuck they want, specifically when it yeah. comes to war. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, the hypocrisy of these saviors of democracy types. Um, and yeah, it just looks like this shit is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Well, that was, you know, that's the, the big worry is that this uh, situation in Israel-Palestine can turn into a broader regional war. And you get the sense that Israel would like it to become a broader regional regional war, or at least the political leadership of Israel. Um, you can imagine, you know, it's the tale as old as time that if, uh, you know, if you're a right wing president, war is always is always good for your oh, it's internal great to, to like, you know, get people um, on the nationalism vibe. Yeah. Like we got to rally behind the flag. That's always yeah. a good word. Yeah. I mean, and, and and and, you know, there was the there was the attack on the two Hamas leaders in southern Lebanon. You know, Israel has been bombing some southern Lebanon since the since October 7th, pretty consistently, um, a couple of journalists were killed in, in southern Lebanon as well um, as a result of Israeli attacks. And, um, you know, there was the, there's the whole situation in, in the Red Sea. And I, I don't mean to make light of the situation, but I mean, the Houthi rebels are, mm -hmm. you know, they these are these are battle hardened dudes after mm -hmm. years of the a very long war um, supported by the U.S. with Saudi Arabia. Yep. Um, and, 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 and well, like in the Saudi supported regime within within Yemen. Right. Um, and, um, you know, so like, you know, what's another you know, what's a little bit more fighting for guys who've been just just battle been hardened, fighting for but, years? Yeah, for years. Um, and they were actually disrupting so many commercial shipping lanes. Um, in the Red Sea, you could, you know, people were sharing on Twitter these um, kind of shipping tracker maps, um, and you could see just global commerce just going around the Horn of Africa and and the Cape of uh, uh, the Cape of Good Hope um, instead of going through through the Red Sea up into uh, to the Suez Canal because like they were just scared of these Houthi rebels. So I guess it was only a matter of time before the U.S. was like, you you cannot in interrupt the flow of, of commerce. Um, we're going to bomb your, your shit. So, um, but again, I mean, the, the real, the real kind of the real, um, you know, worry is that these hostilities, um, would bring a Hezbollah into the fight, which it has not, like they've been bombing Southern Lebanon and, and Hezbollah has not entered the fray, which I think, you know, says a lot about, I don't know the level of restraint. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like they're literally just bombing their country, and uh, and 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 they're not they're not entering the fight. Um, and obviously, Iran, um, the Houthis, Hezbollah, and Iran are all kind of friendly regimes, right? They're all right. friendly to each other 
obviously they all have their own internal uh, political situations, but let's more or less, you can more or less lump them together in a kind of. Uh, yeah, they're approach. all kind of pretty much hate the Saudis <laughs> uh, for the most part. And the UAE is, you know, they've, they've sort of uh, allied themselves with the Saudis, but they're not even, you know, natural bedfellows themselves yeah. um, because the Saudi regime is so uh, hard line Islamic, whereas the UAE, they fancy themselves as a little bit more westernized, a little bit more secular, right? They like to, um, they like to go to the nightclubs in New York City and, yeah. you know, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. They, they, like, they like to partake in red light districts around the world. We yeah. know what their bag is. They like to offer like Instagram girls like a yacht trip in, uh, yes. in Croatia. Yeah, yeah. If you've ever known a hot Instagram girl, they've been approached by uh, someone from the UAE. Uh, oh my God! Of course, of course, and that was you know, <laughs> that's a, this is a diversion, but that's like a trope in like, you know, you see a hot chick going to UAE, you're just like, oh, did she you know get paid how much money to do terrible sex acts with these terrible right. oil sheiks um, and princes? But that's neither here nor there. But yeah, it just seems like the hostilities. Um, <sighs> seem to be just going further and further. And, you know, I was reading my man, Spencer Ackerman, God bless him, if his Forever Wars newsletter. He's like, well, you know, we could just stop bombing the shit out of stuff and just come to the table and end this. There's that an idea. Be, that's an idea. That's, a problem. that's never, it's never on the table. Though, is <laughs> it's it? the, and, and again, and we, you know, we rag on the mainstream media all the time. There's nobody on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News making that case that we should just stop the warring, stop the bombing, come to the table, um, and you know, deal with these, deal with yeah. our quote unquote enemies, our <laughs> adversaries, as if they are human beings who can be reasoned with. Yeah. No, yeah, no, it's, uh, peace is never, like, when it's, like, something must be done, peace is never the, is never the answer, and, you know, it's always with the benefit of hindsight, and they, they sort of never learn, but if you look at all the conflicts in the past 30, 40 years, whatever, you just go through each one, and, and each one, restraint and peace would have been a much better course of action than what was undertaken, you know, whether that was, you know, obviously Iraq and Afghanistan, the two, the two obvious examples, like, yeah, we could have just not done that, you know, <laughs> done yeah. something else. We, we could have just not done that. And man, and again, I think they got it so sweet, the, the neocons and the warmongers in the sense that, you know, and Danny so smartly brings this up all the time, DB, friend of the show the third woke bro. Um, he's like, one, it's a volunteer military force. Yeah. So it just feels like something that no, nobody's everyday Americans don't even have to consider it. Your niece, your nephew, your brother, your child just isn't over there. It's all voluntary. Right. Um, that's a one. And then a two is that it's, it's abroad. Like, it's yeah. not happening in Wichita. It's not happening on the borders of Queens and Brooklyn or the Upper West Side. It's not happening in Los Angeles. Like, it's out of sight and out of mind. The people who actually have to go fight these wars, um, in so much as it's part of our um, our voluntary our volunteer force, a lot of this shit gets privatized. You know what I mean? So it's not even army dudes, people that are enlisted. It's like these mercenary groups that get paid to get these government contracts to go out there and do God knows what, be held accountable by no government um, in existence. Right. Um, and of course, you know, I'm reading some shit the other day and I think the New York Times where it's like, oh, it's it's our job to rebuild Gaza. And guess who's going to get those freaking contracts, our tax money to these private entities that go up and build back up Gaza after the, the, those places were bombed at our behest. It's yeah. just like they're getting it from every single end. It's really amazing. Yeah. I was thinking about it today. I was trying to wonder what the how the reaction here would be amongst the CNN class and whatever had October 7th. Have had October seventh happened under Trump? 
Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, like, somebody, you know, somebody think from, about uh, that. So like think about how weird that would be. About that. The never Trump, the resistance, yada, yada, yada. Some people think that more libs would have had to align themselves against the war. I don't actually subscribe I don't know. to that. Yeah, I don't think so either. But it would have been just a funny thing to witness, you know, your your I don't know, you know, uh you know your dick durbins of the world like standing with the president uh on this like it would just be such a weird uh um it would just be such a weird thing to witness like it would be it would be a weird news event to process it would be you know it would be that it, it's it like would be it's, different but ultimately i think we'd be giving the Israelis oh no no nothing would fundamentally be different nothing would fundamentally be different like the billions would flow the the aid the support the blah 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 all that stuff would would not be questioned um, it would just be it would just be kind of interesting to see all the libs kind of get in get in line with uh, with the they're players. so in lockstep with this shit. That's why I'm just like I don't know, man. the The uniformity of the message, the messaging is kind of insane. Yeah, you know, yeah. like where it's like. Man, I don't know. I don't know if the Democrats like Chuck Schumer would be like, Trump's not doing enough. Yeah. If that wouldn't be the response, not that, oh, we need to ease into this. It would be like, no, Trump needs to go harder for Israel. He's not going hard enough. You know, like, I, I, I don't know. Because, you know, just think about some of the wars that Obama got into and how they had to equivocate and fake intellectualize it. Like, you know what they did um, with Gaddafi. It wasn't this, they didn't just get up and be like, we're doing this shit because it's the right thing. They, they felt a need to make a case for why they were doing it. And Barry was like, we're not putting troops on the ground and blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. They, they went out of their way to explain why this was the, the course of action to take. Um, they didn't do any of that shit with this. They don't do any of that. They're just like, we're supporting this. We're giving it the full-throated support. There is no room for any other interpretation besides this is the perfect idea. So yeah. I, I don't know. I, I understand it. I've heard people say this like, man, if Trump was leading this charge, a lot of libs would force themselves to critique this thing. No, yeah, really no, I, I don't I don't think it would be meaningful. But like, okay, but even now with Biden, you're seeing what, what I find kind of interesting is that like the pod Johns have abandoned the president on this issue. What's they the pod, John's? Your crooked media type, John Favreau. Ooh, uh, they're, they're against this? They're, I mean, like, they're not like, you know, they're not like... Uh, Pom-pom waving. But they're but they're pretty vocal on Twitter about, about, like, you know, this can't be supported in this way with this, you know, with no strings attached, like, you know, like... Mm. Um, and, I mean, there's obviously clear, very clearly a generational issue uh, mm. within the the democratic party um i mean you're seeing biden's poll numbers i mean i don't know if you looked at this shit was i mean it is fucking bananas dude like i mean every time i look every time somebody's talking about biden and his positioning in this race it's and they're like you know lib or left or whatever it's just panic pure panic i haven't looked well, at the numbers myself dude, it's just everybody like even the underwater like, with trump he's underwater with trump with young people who he won by like 35 points in 2020 yeah. That's insane. He's underwater with Hispanics. Like he's <laughs> the fewer, you know, like he's underwater with Hispanics and his black support is cratering. You know, I mean, it's still, it's still pretty, it's still very high because black, black, yeah, support black people president. love Joe Biden. Everybody knows that. <laughs> but, but, and I think it's very clearly a kind of, uh, you know, I mean, obviously there's all the, the issues, but I think, I, I really think you can't separate it from, from the war in in Gaza, like I mean, I think that that is just that is just like it, this whole situation. I and as, here's what I tell people, even people who disagree with me on 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 the issue. The president looks weak on this issue, and Period. that is what people really don't want. It's not so much where he would have stood on 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 the issue, as long as he projected a feeling of strength and having command of the situation. And he just looks like overwhelmed by the situation, and that and and that is what I think is causing a lot of his. It it clearly today. feels like Netanyahu and the Israelis are dictating terms to him and his regime. Yeah, which is like, yeah, you look weak. 
There's yeah. no leadership. Nobody thinks you're leading this. Nobody thinks you're you're like out in front of this. Everybody thinks you're just like, no, like they want to do that. So we're saying, OK, yeah. which, like you said, just looks bad. It looks terrible. Um, and it's ill because you hear these things that Biden fancies himself a Middle East expert. So, you know, there's some of the domestic stuff, especially like some of the labor stuff. He knows that he's not been great on it in the past and he's taken cues from people that are to his left on it because he's been like, you know what? I haven't always been this pro sort of worker, working man type of thing. And he's 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 listened to other people. You see what he's doing with the antitrust and that kind of thing. These domestic issues, you could tell he's not going with his traditional Joe Biden mode of handling it there. But with this Israel thing, like people say like, no, Joe Biden thinks he's a Middle East expert and he don't need help. He doesn't need advice. His instincts for him are the right ones. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, this shit just it, just when you think this stuff can't get any more dire, um, it just gets worse and worse by the day. But we move on to something, you know, not quite as dire or pressing, but you would you wouldn't know that if um if you only paid attention to blue check Twitter um in the media, and that's this fight over the quote unquote war on DEI, Nando. Um me being the ringers resident DEI. Uh, <laughs> higher employee, higher. Yeah. I feel very You're, empowered. Yeah, to yeah speak the affirmative on action higher. Everyone knows that, dude. Everybody yeah. knows that. Everybody knows I was in affirmative action. You know, Bill Simmons um, was feeling the heat, dude. And, and yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, New York Times yeah. got in his ass and he said, Where can I get the first black guy? And it was me. Um, <laughs> dude, but anyway, I'm watching this play out on Twitter, and I said this on. It's just crazy how this works out. Like, obviously, liberals are just like really like liberals of every stripe think that DEI is one of the most sacred and important issues of our time, which is fucking hilarious, which is, you know, the example that we always give on the show. Like, it's literally this idea that there needs to be representation on the board of Goldman Sachs and Disney because that's and Harvard and Harvard and Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's what's going to be the salvation of disaffected, marginalized people in America. It's going to be representation at the most elite of elite institutions, like the like the hyper elite. Right. Um, and they're just and of course, conservatives, um, they have their reasons to hate on this. But you know what I notice about conservatives that they're good at? They they're so good when they realize the libs don't have a coherent argument for something and whether they believe it or not, like this anti DEI kind of goes with the conservative mindset, but they recognize they can smell blood in the water that like your argument for this shit is not coherent whatsoever. Yeah. It's got holes. Yeah. And they're losing their minds on this everywhere. You know, the, the normal guys like Chait and, you know, all these people, um, uh, liberal media. But like, you know, somebody like Mark Lamont Hill, who is, you know, full disclosure, that's Jerv's man's. I've done his show. I like the guy. But he put out a tweet that said Harvard must replace um, Claudine Gay with a black woman. That was the tweet. And I read that and I was in like, you know, the implication being like, I don't know that like this is somehow a black a issue that concerns the black masses. When the truth of the matter is it only concerns the black elite, like, yeah, like, like exclusive an intra elite spat. And by the way, Claudine Gay plagiarized like like I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, she like, did. I mean, the mo the motivation for the for the for the investigation was obviously was dubious was dubious and and actually it was like it actually claudine gay suppressed pro-palestinian uh protests in at harvard i mean like this is what like what's insane about this whole situation is that she was not some radical you know she just got wrong-footed she just got kind of wrong-footed on the congressional floor answered clumsily uh it seemed like a very lawyer but she like let's be clear like on campus 
the Harvard administration was hostile to pa Palestinian protesters. Like this is not, yeah. you know, and so the motivation for her investigation was obviously dubious, but they found, they found the thing. And she, it seems pretty clear that she plagiarized and you, I'm sorry, you cannot be the president of Harvard and have like a really credible plagiarism <laughs> scandal Bro, on your like, fucking thing. None you of know? your students like, are allowed to, like that's like the rule number one you tell every single college student like bro you can't do this you have to cite your sources like this is this is foundational to like the the activity of colleging <laughs> like this is like, this is this is it so yeah. obviously they got her with cause it's just and 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 mark is not the only person that expressed that sentiment but like again for me Somebody needs to explain to me what, what black people, who are the black people whose lives, whose, you know, trajectory has been improved by Claudine Gay's president's presidency at Harvard? Like, how can you make that argument that this is an issue that affects the masses of black people? Like how it's Harvard. Yeah. Well, the, the liberal argument forever on the way out of poverty for the working, like for poor people is education. That education is the, um, is the pathway to um, a you know a better life, and that is absolutely true on an individual level. You know, like if you have kids, you should obviously encourage them and try to get them to go to college. And it's, they, they, yes, it's obviously true on an individual level. The problem with that is that college, and specifically like the Ivy League or an elite college, are elite for the very reason that they're exclusionary. <laughs> if they're for everyone, they can no longer be. They can't be elite. elite. They, like the <laughs> this quality that like makes it inaccessible is the point. Yes. Like the point of this school is that it's inaccessible yes. to the masses. Like that's why that's its entire reason for being. Right. So it can never be something that concerns itself with the masses of the people. And yeah. so I'm sorry if a hundred less black kids get to be half, in the, half of whom are like the, 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 the granddaughters of like some African bro, prince, First know? of all. So I learned this in real time talking to Ethan two days ago. Um, one Claudine Gay is Haitian American. Didn't know that. Yeah. She's not um, a, her family. Daughter. However, is like, so well, you know, Roxanne Gay is her cousin. Yes, Roxanne Gay, Hyper Lib, Arthur, I'm good. Um, so Claudine Gay is like some concrete magnate in Haiti. Her family's like Haitian oligarchs. She comes from the oligarchy in Haiti. Like, what the fuck? Like, the idea that this woman loses her job and her life is materially impacted in any way. She's going to get another job that pays her just as much. Probably has just as much status. Like, if not more, like she's, nothing is happening to this lady. She got railroaded. I'm sure this was her dream gig. And I, I guess black girls across America was supposed to be looking up to this. One. I don't like, I don't, I really don't know the argument for this shit. But if you're watching it on Twitter, this shit counts for black politics. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, it's. I mean, that's what's that's that's what that's what politics has become now is these kind of um, intra elite squabbles. You know what I mean? Like the, all of the issues around college campuses are are, you know, for, for whatever for whatever merit they may have, they're fundamentally a just kind of intra elite squabble like that, that, you know, like there's, there's definitely conservatives on campus and it fucking, it must be annoying if you're a conservative on campus to like be surrounded by all these fucking, you know, annoying libs. Like I get it, <laughs> you know? And like, if you're a liberal on campus, like it must be annoying that like your college, you know, supports like fucking, uh, you know, is like sponsored by Raytheon and supports like, all, I get it. You know what I mean? Like supports every single war ever. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. And is like a, just a feeding uh, system for, Goldman Sachs and and McDonnell Douglas. Like, I mean, I get it, you know? Um, 
but but it is fundamentally an intra-elite squabble. So like the the I mean, this is like why when we're on the left, we see these things and we're just like, you guys, like shut the fuck up. Like no one gives a shit because <laughs> The path towards like everyone should have a, an education and access to education. Yes, is like the core principle of, uh, of yes, and like a strong public education system and even a strong public college. And if system you get into that Harvard, stuff. that's very nice for you. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And yes, it sucks that a hundred years ago it was only is only white men were allowed to go to Harvard. And yes. Harvard. So um, that's that's I guess a small victory for a very small subset of the population. But the real emancipation and and the real path out of poverty. Um, for the masses is not that. I mean, it's not that. Like education is a good in and of itself and people should be educated and empowered and think for themselves. And that's, that's, always, a, that's always good in and of itself. But it's not necessarily going to put food on your table um, if the economy doesn't work for everyone. You know, and right. and if and the only way the economy works for everyone is is like we say all the time is through um, a strong, empowered working class through organized labor unions. And that's like you know, like that is a fundamental issue, and that's why we we've oriented our show around it so so much because like, but it's but it's important to talk about this issue as a way to talk about why it's not important or why you shouldn't care about it that much um, because you really don't have to worry about it if you're not affected by this. Bro, don't fucking worry about so it. It's outside not a- of the realm of concern for, you know, because you got to think about it. When I think about something like, you know, I don't know if you saw this, but Taraji P. Henson didn't get a private driver on the color purple or some job that she had. Um, where I'm like, yeah, you should have had an Uber black for sure. You deserve that. Like whatever. Um, and this idea that like, and, 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 and the, the reason why they're broadcasting this to the masses of blacks as if this is a black issue, because somehow we're supposed to relate to a black Walmart worker out there. Um, when it's like, yo, how many good acting jobs do you like? The way this industry exists right now, how many people do you think can have like great acting jobs? It's got to be like 2,000. Yeah, no, it's tiny. Yeah. Maybe it's got to be something something like, and I'm talking about the acting job specifically, because that's what Taraji P. Henson does. It's got to be like 2,000. Yeah. How can, how, I don't know why or how I should compare that to Amazon workers and Walmart workers and McDonald's workers and like the masses of people who get up and go to work every day. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Like, yes, I want well, your job. Okay, to so be I, no, but here's, the, here's, you're onto something that's interesting because, you know, obviously work, I, I, I work in, in Hollywood and, you know, a few years ago, you'll remember there was this really really aggressive push to diversify hollywood i think well oscar so white i remember started it started with oscar so white um and then that that bled into the george floyd thing and that led into like a huge push to diversify hollywood and i obviously work mostly in the more in the hispanic uh space but that they you know hispanic and latino issues were included in that whole push and what ended up happening there was this like there was this kind of well meaning effort to diversify hollywood um, so they wanted to give more jobs, both in front of and behind the camera to marginalized communities, et cetera, et cetera. You've heard all the terms. What ends up happening in actuality is because uh, the vast majority of marginalized people are marginalized and don't go to Harvard, you know, um, and don't go to, you know, the place. Bro, where all, all it means is Donald Glover and Lena Waithe get more jobs. That, that, that's it. Or, or like a Mexican rich kid or, you yes. know what I mean? Like, That's and it. It's, the people who are going to get these jobs are proximate to the elite. Um, I need to find this Cornell West fucking clip that I had posted years ago. I mean, during 2020. And he was doing an interview and he was talking about, oh, and they're talking about the blacks and the diversity and blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'm going to give you a prediction. The masses of black people will not be helped by this push, but you know who will? He said, the black bourgeoisie. (laughs) (laughs) 
And I was like, yeah. yes. And there isn't a there isn't a Latino bourgeoisie the way the same way there is a black bourgeoisie. It's just different. That's but what ends up happening, they just they just end up importing them from Latin America. They just gotcha. import they import the Latin American bourgeoisie who are all educated and who all speak English perfectly right. and who all went to the right you know, like, like people, some boarding people school from and wherever elite society in Brazil and Argentina yeah. Yeah. and yes these are the people yeah. that they call their quote unquote diversity hires yeah yeah so yeah it's, and again I I I, I think. Um, Claudine Gay, the way they attacked her was like fucked up. It was right wing attack mob. At the same time, libs, remember when we told you to relax on the canceling shit? Eventually they start canceling people you like too. And yeah. guess what? The establishment, the powers that be, they're going to be in a much better position to cancel people than we ever will. Well, this one has been hilarious because, right, the guy who led the charge for the canceling of Claudine Gay was this guy. Yeah, his wife was, is also a plagiarist. And now they're digging his wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a never-ending like, cycle. I started, I, I've been meaning to talk to Danny about this because I'm not in academia. But, like, man, I'm guessing that because it's like all these people came up as academics, like, post the internet, like, I'm guessing they all plagiarized. Of course. You know, because, like, because when you have the internet, like, I don't know. It just, it, it just probably is so easy to, you have access to so many more sources and all that shit. Like it's probably so much easier to fall into the temptation. And it's not, I'm not saying they did it in like an unfair way, but I'm saying like, if you went, if you took a fine tooth comb to any of these people, I'm sure like, I'm sure you'll find just because, you know, I wonder if that's the case that if just like, it's just like, if you, if you really want to, like basically all academics are now kind of screwed because like you could, plausibly make a plagiarism argument for almost all of them because of and the and they, here's and this is the thing and we can end off on this because this, this is a year since this happened this convo i had it was all-star weekend um in salt lake city i was talking to these two afro latina um women that i met at a hennessy party um out there and we got to talk and they asked me where i work and i asked them where they work and um these women worked at goldman sachs and they were like the hugest proponents of this DEI shit. And I was like, guys, how can gold, like, how is Goldman Sachs? You'd like, y'all know what y'all company's job, like what they- Yeah, the, the, the most evil state. company. Yeah, the most evil company, like, yeah. How can Goldman Sachs make their mission about diversity? And their argument was, essentially trickle down for liberals. economics yeah trickle yes. down economics uh yeah. black people are going to get on the board and then they're going to put other black people on and and those black people are going to do what they're going to do the mission of goldman saxing <laughs> there's no in every in any oppressive system the best way to oppress a population is to trick is to dole out a handful of of goodies to some of the smartest and most industrial people of that oppressed class. And then they turn around and they're the, they're the fucking meanest ones to, uh, this Period. has always and, been the case. So, like when I sat uh, there and I heard Goldman Sachs employees, I'm like, yo, I, and, 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 and I did find some common ground with them. I was like, yo, let's just say the board at y'all job got 20% blacker tomorrow. What would fundamentally change about your job? They thought about it and they said absolutely nothing. No, because the, <laughs> like, because the logic of capital, the logic of capital is the same. You know, <laughs> it doesn't matter who's operating matter. the levers. Guys. If they don't, if they don't do it to maximize to the this. profit, they'll just get replaced by That's some other it. black woman. You know what I mean? Like, there's like there's only they're... one way to do exploitation. Like, it doesn't matter who's doing it. Like, the name of the game is exploitation. Like, there's no. There's no equitable way to exploit. Like, it just doesn't exist. And anyway, man, um, I know if you're listening to Woke Bros that you've noticed this chatter online about the, we're mourning the death of DEI and Mark Cuban is doing Twitter threads about DEI and its importance. And uh, like, it's that's just, just like, like, him and Elon God. Musk fighting about this shit. I'm like, I couldn't, like, I can't, I, this I is, can't. I, I give you, I give Black Woke Bro listeners um, permission to completely ignore that topic. Um, it doesn't fucking matter for the masses of Black people. It literally doesn't move the needle. Um,
anyway i just thought we would talk about it because it's in the news i'm happy to be back obviously we're back from our break we will see you guys next week peace to my man john gervais um on the ones and threes keeping the trains running on time peace out y'all all right